Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I've got a sunrise that I took on the beach in Oregon, a, a, I don't know, a couple months ago or whenever it was. And I'm, uh, I'm basically, uh, it was a beautiful sunrise and I just want to accentuate the mood a little bit, create a little bit of drama, but not overdo it and just get some nice pop in the color, balance the light, typical kind of stuff that you want to do. Here's the photo. And what I'll do is I've already got all the filters in place. I'm just going to turn them on as I go through them and talk about what I'm doing and why. But the first thing I'm going to do is uh, get my notes so that I can see what I'm doing um, is get light. And, and the first thing I want to do is move this up. So I'm just going to go to about 6,000 and 15, except I mistyped that. And if you didn't know, you can just, um, you know, click in there and then put in the numbers. And on tint, I'm gonna go to 20. So, and uh, that's, you know, it's basic uh, just color uh, temperature work that I do and tint work. Um, I tend to do that on just about every photo. I'm gonna add a little bit of smart contrast. I'm gonna pull the highlights down a bit, you know, maybe something about like that and lift the shadows really just a smidge. Uh, something about like that. So very simple and straightforward adjustment so far. I mean, it's, it's your basic kind of stuff. There it is before and after. Now I'm going to accent AI, or I should say enhance AI, because I'm using both accent AI and sky enhancer. And if you look at that, it does pop the photo. But as I said in this recent video, you got to be careful about using too much, too much accent AI, because it will really darken the stuff that's dark uh, and brighten the stuff that's bright. So I'm at 50, but if I go to 100, it really accentuates um, you know, what's going on there. So I'm gonna go back to 50 because it's a little bit tamer adjustment. It does help me with the light, but again, it pops contrast and color and things like that. So you gotta be careful uh, as I talked about in that video, which is why my next move, same as in that last video, is over to super contrast because when I turn this on, you can see that's helping me really balance the light. And also if you look at those darker clouds, like in the uh, sky here, uh, as well as the reflections of them, when you turn that back on, they're a little bit less intense, which I like. And I was able to do that because of super contrast and specifically moving the balance sliders, which as you can see, I did in midtones. Um, so that, that those kind of things help quite a bit and really allow you to basically manage the light uh, comfortably and easily in your photo. Speaking of manage, uh, managing the light, the next thing I want to do is brighten the foreground a little bit. So I actually went and got a gradient mask for the foreground um, with a local mask. And so I just applied that, as you can see, just painted that in. Well, I didn't paint it in. I used a gradient, um, dropped that in the foreground, and then I just lift the exposure a slight bit, a 0.18. So you can do a lot of other things. You can go brighter if you want to. I think you got to be careful uh, because you don't want the um, image to be out of balance. You don't want it too bright in the foreground and not bright enough in the sky. So just an 18 there, just a small amount. And that was all I did. Uh, and then I was back on the uh, the filter tab and here i went to structure ai and that's simply because i wanted to go negative across the entire image because i want this kind of soft dreamy it was beautiful light as you can see and i don't know these kind of scenes to me don't really require a lot of structure or detail things like that i like them to be kind of calm kind of tame kind of soft to be honest i know some people don't like soft photos and they prefer sharpness totally cool and depending on the image i like that too but in this kind of image i tend to like them a little bit softer simply because visually for me, that kind of goes along with that dreamy kind of look that I'm going for in this photo. So having done that, now I'm going to move on to color. And so the first thing is golden hour, which gives it just a nice, nice uh, warm pop across the entire photo. As you can see there, it really does pop those warm areas, especially like that big cloud in the, on the right hand side. So you got to be careful not to overdo it. But if you do overdo it, you can always go back to the color slider and adjust the saturation or the luminance of the orange if you needed to. I'm not going to here. But as you can see, the before, a little bit tamer, but it was a nice pop of orange. And now I think it's really standing out, which I like. So it's helping me kind of get the look that I want. But the other thing I like to do to kind of uh, pair, if you will, with golden hour is go into toning and do a little bit of work in the highlights. It's just a minor adjustment here but it gives me a nice little extra pop of that sunrise kind of feel. Um, I'm, I'm at hue of zero, which is all the way left. So it's kind of in the red, well, I kind of, it is in the red and saturation of 15, which is a pretty light touch. But if I turn that off and you look at the beforehand, it's almost hard to tell. But then when I turn this back on, there's a little bit more of that magenta kind of, uh, I don't know, purple, I guess magenta is the color, kind of magenta across the image, which I like. I mean, it is hitting the highlights, uh, another thing I'll often do is go into shadows and put some stuff in the blue. I'm not going to do that here. I think I've got enough blue. 
and I don't want to really mess with the shadows. They're dark enough, um, and I think there's enough contrast in the light that it looks good. You know, bright in the top, kind of darker in the center where the land is, brighter again in the foreground, which is the reflection, of course. So I feel like I'm in pretty good shape there. And then I just wrap it up with Mystical, which, again, I'm kind of going for that dreamy kind of soft look. And I think Mystical does a good job of helping enhance that. It does kind of soften the image. You can smooth it out more, adjust shadows if you want to. But, I mean, I mean, it's kind of a light touch, a 25. But if I turn it off, you can see beforehand. And then when I turn it back on, it does give a little bit of contrast. So keep that in mind. And so you might need to go back to super contrast or your local adjustment and make further refinements. I'm going to leave it like that. It's a soft, gentle, dreamy kind of look that I was going for. And a few key things really got me there. Just balancing the light with things like Accent AI and the local adjustment and super contrast. And then coming in and doing some color work like with golden hour and toning. And then kind of getting that dreamy look by doing negative structure and mystical. So three kind of things uh, with different tools for each thing that really got me to the end result that I wanted, which like I said, is a soft but colorful and dreamy kind of overall sunset look. So there it is before and there it is after. And the sliding window here, you can see we really amped up the colors. It is fairly saturated. If it's too much color for you, I get that. You can easily make those adjustments in the color tab with HSL to specifically adjust a, a particular color channel or overall saturation and vibrance, as you can see here. I'm not gonna do it, I like this look, but that's how I did it. Quick, easy, powerful, just a few filters approaching the various topics that I wanted to approach, which was uh, balance the light, get the color right, and then create that dreamy look. That was it, that was how I did it. Quick, easy, powerful, that's Luminar AI. Thanks for watching, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas for your own photos, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care of yourselves. I'll see you later, and adios.